So in this video, we're going to look at energy and velocity within simple harmonic motion. We're going to describe how in simple harmonic motion, kinetic energy and potential energy vary with displacement from its equilibrium position. And we're going to calculate the velocity of an oscillator at a particular point or displacement in its oscillation. So we have to remember the overriding formula for simple harmonic motion is A is equal to minus kx, or the acceleration of an object that's undergoing simple harmonic motion is proportional to the negative displacement from its equilibrium position. That is, if I pull my pendulum here up to its amplitude, at that point there, it has got its maximum possible displacement from the equilibrium position, And that means it will have its maximum possible acceleration. The acceleration is proportional to the negative displacement of, uh, sorry, to the negative of the displacement. And since my displacement here is its maximum negative, my acceleration will be its maximum positive. So my pendulum will accelerate towards the equilibrium position. When it hits the equilibrium position, it's at its maximum velocity its minimum displacement, and since the displacement from the equilibrium position is zero at this point, that means that the acceleration is zero when x equals zero. And because we know what's happening in terms of the velocity, we can understand what's happening in terms of energy. Here I have the same pendulum, and I'm going to pull it back to its starting point at x. Now at this point, my pendulum is a certain distance above where it will be at equilibrium. And because it is at height h, it's going to have gravitational potential energy, m g h. Now as it swings down towards the equilibrium position, that gravitational potential energy is going to transfer into kinetic energy until at the equilibrium position it's got maximum velocity because all that GPE has been changed into kinetic energy. So we know that the maximum potential energy will occur at the amplitude with it being zero at the equilibrium position and the maximum kinetic energy will occur at the equilibrium position when it's going fastest. If we were to put this in table form, we get this one here, and it's worth you remembering that. And if we assume that there's no damping in the system at all, no dissipative forces slowing things down, the total energy in the system remains the same. That is, the total energy is always going to be the sum of the potential and the kinetic energies. So when its potential energy is maximum at the amplitude, that potential energy will be equal to the total energy of the system since it will have zero kinetic energy at that point. So let's have a look at a spring system. We know that for a spring, if you stretch it away from its equilibrium position, you are giving it potential energy. We know that as it oscillates, that potential energy, which will be maximum at the amplitudes, is going to start to change into kinetic energy as it moves towards the equilibrium point. So my potential is changing into kinetic, and at the equilibrium position it will have its maximum kinetic energy and zero potential energy. And since this energy stored in a stretched spring is equal to a half kx squared, where k is the spring constant of the system and x is the extension from the equilibrium point, we can know that the total potential energy at a given displacement. And since the kinetic energy is going to be zero when the potential energy is its maximum, the total energy of the system is equal to the maximum potential energy, or that is, the total energy at any point in this system of oscillation will be equal to a half times the spring constant times the amplitude of oscillation squared. 
So let's look at an overall equation then for the kinetic energy. If we know that the total energy of the system is going to be a half Ka squared, where K is the spring constant and A is the amplitude or the maximum displacement from the equilibrium position, let's say we wanted to find the kinetic energy that this mass spring system had at this arbitrary displacement x from the equilibrium position. How much kinetic energy will it have when it's travelling through this purple line? Well, we know the total energy is the sum of the potential and the kinetic energy. And therefore, we can rearrange this to get the kinetic energy at any point x in this object's oscillation will be equal to the total energy minus the potential energy at that point x, because the total energy is going to be the sum of the kinetic and the potential energies. Now we know that the total energy will be a half Ka squared. This is what we looked at in the last slide. And we know that the potential energy at any extension is a half Kx squared. So a half times K times the amplitude squared minus a half times K times the extension at X squared will give us our kinetic energy. And I can factor that out into brackets like so to give us our kinetic energy equation. The kinetic energy at extension X is equal to a half K times A squared minus X squared. And now that we have an equation for the kinetic energy, we can work out how fast our oscillator is going at that point. Again, we are using an arbitrary distance x and we want to know now how fast the oscillator is going. Well we saw in the last slide that the kinetic energy it will have is given by a half k brackets a squared minus x squared where remember a is the amplitude and x is the displacement at that point. And since we know that kinetic energy is also equal to a half mv squared we can put those equal to each other. If I bring, well, remembering that omega squared, the linear, so the angular velocity squared is equal to k over m, we looked at that a few lessons ago, and bringing a half m underneath like so, I get my k over m there, which is equal to my omega squared, my halves cancel each other out, so I get the equation that v squared is equal to omega squared brackets a squared minus x squared. So if I want to just to find the velocity, I square root all of that to get the velocity equation. The velocity of my object at point x or a displacement of x is equal to plus or minus because it's a vector omega or the angular velocity square root of the amplitude squared minus the displacement squared. And when you're doing questions on this, we need to remember that omega, our angular velocity, is equal to 2 pi f, which is equal to 2 pi over t. OK, so let's take a quick look at an example question. I have a simple pendulum, so I'm going to draw a little diagram to help me. And I am told that it has a mass of 0.1 kilograms. It's attached to a thread and it's displaced through a height of 8 millimeters. So if that is the maximum displacement, that is going to be my amplitude A. It's released. It's going to move back towards the equilibrium position, transferring potential energy into kinetic energy. And we're told it has a time period T of 1.01 .01 seconds. So we need to calculate the velocity v. And the equation is that v is equal to plus or minus omega times the root of a squared minus x squared. So looking at that equation, we know we've got a, we know that we have x, which is our three millimeters, but we don't have omega. But we can work omega out. Omega is 2 pi f 
or 2 pi over t. And we know what our time period is. Our time period is 1.01 seconds. So omega is equal to 2 pi over 1.01, which is equal to 6.22 rads per second. And now I can take that value for omega and substitute it into my equation up here. So my velocity is going to be equal to plus or minus 6.22 times the square root of 8 times 10 to the minus 3 meters because it was an 8 millimeter amplitude. And we're squaring that minus our 3 millimetres, so 3 times 10 to the minus 3 metres, also squared, all square rooted. And when I type those numbers into my calculator, I get that my velocity at a displacement of 3 millimetres is going to be 0.046 metres and that's how you work out the velocity of an oscillating object at any displacement in its oscillation. So let's take a look at another example. This time we're told that a small object of mass 0.2 kilograms is suspended from a spring. So that there is our mass. It's displaced from its equilibrium position to an amplitude of one centimetre, so one centimetre is one times ten to the minus two metres, so that there is my amplitude. And we're told, this time, not what its time period is, but how long it takes for ten oscillations. So the time period will be the time taken divided by the number of oscillations which will give us 0.444 seconds. So the first thing it wants us to calculate is the spring constant of the system. Now this is actually separate to what we've done before in this video, but we have covered it in a previous one. The spring constant, k, comes into the overall equation for a spring. t is equal to 2 pi root m over k. We know what the time period is, 0.444 seconds, and we know what m is. So if we square the whole thing, t squared is equal to 4 pi squared m over k, we can rearrange this whole thing to get k, our spring constant. k is equal to 4 pi squared m over t. I know that my m is my 0 0.2, I know that my t is 0 0.444, so when I substitute those into my equation, I get k as being 40.05 newtons per meter. So there's my spring constant. Now it wants to know the maximum potential energy of the system. Well, we know that the potential energy, or the maximum potential energy, is equal to a half times the spring constant times the amplitude squared. Because the potential energy at any point is going to be a half times the spring constant times the displacement squared, and amplitude is your maximum displacement. So my amplitude is my one centimetre, so EP is equal to a half times the spring constant that I just calculated, 40.05, times my 1 times 10 to the minus 2, all squared, which gives me a potential energy of 2.0 times 10 to the minus 3 joules. And then finally, it wants us to work out the velocity at a displacement of 4 millimetres, so that will become our x. Well, again, just like before, I use my velocity equation. V is equal to plus or minus omega times the root of the amplitude squared minus the displacement squared. 
I need to work out what my omega is, which is going to be 2 pi over t, which is going to be 2 pi over 0.444, which gives me an angular velocity of 14.15 radians per second. Now I can put that into my equation here, and I get that my velocity is equal to plus or minus 14.15 times the root of 1 times 10 to the minus 2 squared, my amplitude, minus my oops displacement, which is my 4 millimetres, that's 4 times 10 to the minus 3 squared, and all of that is rooted. And when I plonk those numbers into my calculator, I get a velocity at point x, 4 millimetres away, of 0 0.14 metres per second. So those are the basic ways that we calculate it. Now in the exam you'll get much more padded out questions that will be a lot more involved, but hopefully that's given you a good idea of what's going on. The last thing we need to look at is how the graphs of potential and kinetic energy vary with each other. Now we've already said that we're going to have maximum potential energy at the amplitudes. So our potential energy, which we're going to map in blue, will be maximum at the amplitudes. EP is max. EK is zero. At the equilibrium position, the kinetic energy, which is going to be in red, will be at a maximum. And the potential energies will be at a minimum. And we also know that our kinetic energies are going to be zero at the amplitudes. So if I plot those on, these are the graphs that we get for half an oscillation. And this is the total energy in the system. The green dotted line is our total energy, which at all times is the sum of the kinetic and the potential energies. And you need to learn that diagram. You need to be able to reproduce that in the exam. And that's it. That's all there is for potential kinetic energy and velocity in simple harmonic oscillations. I hope that's been useful.